And we're live! Woo! Good night, everybody, and welcome. Good night. Wait. <laughs> uh, uh, good evening. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. Evening. Whenever I get, I get, I get a little. Uh, my mind's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't think of the word. I can't words. think. Yeah. So, hey, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Brylan. I'm Lisa. And this is Brylan. And, and Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. Thanks for being on with us. We appreciate it. Let us know in the chat that you're here with us. We would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, you have any anything you want to say to us, leave it in the chat. We'll be sure to acknowledge it. Yes. And um, so tonight we wanted to talk about some of the Southern Baptist Convention scandals that have been going on lately and just the state of the church and kind of how the church can respond to it. Because if you think about it, whether you feel like the Southern Baptist Convention affects you or not, it does affect you mm-hmm. because it is the body of believers. It, it's, it's a part of the body, and it is the largest Christian denomination and, and convention, uh, if not in the whole world, at least in the United States of America. Yeah. So there is a lot of weight, a lot of power there, and we want to talk about what's been going on so hey can y'all go ahead and leave a a, a chat um uh, let us know you're here in the chat because the chat we see yori and carol and oh there you are yeah welcome yori (laughs) nice to see you um carol thank you for joining us abigail Excited to join you tonight. We are excited you joined us as well. Yeah. Legitimately. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you're on with us. And let us know in the chat. Go ahead, start typing away. No one's typing in the chat. We need some we need some chat some chatterboxes. Chatterboxes. Go ahead. Everybody, <laughs> just go ahead and be a chatterbox tonight. It's okay. Um Hey Christina, we see you. Hi, Christina. So I know, I know <laughs> we were just saying, uh, well, I don't um, Pose, here from South Texas in Rio Grande Valley. Wow, oh, how wow. South Texas this time of year. Is it hot down there right now? Carol, keep me in prayer on June 9th. It'll be five years since I lost my daughter oh. on a motorcycle accident. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that, Carol. That's... I could not even imagine. I don't want to try to either. We will absolutely keep you in prayer. Yes, yeah. 90 to 100 degrees down there in South Texas, Rio Grande. Wow. Gosh. Is it pretty deserty in Rio Grande? Um, Lee Rachel, welcome. Hello. Tidings. I'm so glad to finally join your live stream instead of watching it repeat. I'm from Singapore. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> what time is it in Singapore? Let us know what time it is over there. Yeah, Lee, let us know what time it is. And uh, are you a native of Singapore? Or are you... Oh, it's probably morning, okay. right? Like. Yeah, let us know. Are you morning? a native of Singapore? Aaron says, hey, hope you're having a good evening. Prayers for all those hurting right now. Love from Florida. Yes, absolutely, Aaron. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. No, it's not deserty, just hot, and we have a lot of palm trees. Okay, yeah. So basically, kind of like Southern California where we're at. A lot of yeah. palm trees, and it's hot. Araminto! <laughs> the Brylin and Lisa show. <laughs> wah, wah, wah! Araminta's in the house. We can get started. <laughs> I feel like Araminta always brings the party. Yeah. <sighs> 9, 10 a.m., native of Singapore. Wow, that is so fantastic, Lee. Yeah. Seriously, there's something about that that just warms my heart, knowing that we're so far removed from each other, so far on different sides of the earth. Yeah, but, but we can connect on we're here. We're connecting right now. I love it. <laughs> and Yori's from the Netherlands, so we have the United yeah. States on here, and then we got all over the world. <laughs> we got Europe, yeah, the Asia. U.S., <laughs> Netherlands... Singapore. Yeah. Um, okay. So, hey, if you're on with us, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It helps you to push this video out to more people so more people can see the chat or the uh, the live stream and hop on with us because we got some 
stuff to talk about tonight. That is for sure. I mean, I was driving on the highway, so I couldn't talk. Good. Please never type while driving. (laughs) (laughs) I almost made a joke, but it might be a little too. uh... Yeah, no. You're touching people's hearts from all over the world. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, Seriously, that's so sweet. Thank you. Well, the Lord is, but we hope that he's using us. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. (laughs) Of course. Christina, Canada. Ooh, Canada. Really? I'm sorry. Sorry, water break. <laughs> yep, sorry. Pardon. Is that is that how they say it in Canada? Pardon me. Is that... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was a joke. Sorry. Christina is offended I know. right now. Did I offend? I think our, our viewers just dropped to zero. <laughs> Everyone, are you still there? <laughs> um, yeah, so we really want to get into uh, some of the things going on with the Southern Baptist Convention. The, the Southern Baptist Convention and... Just the scandals that have been going on there, and really the state of the church. Yeah. Um, and where we're at, I think, yeah, our society's hurting. All you have to do is look around, and you can see it. Um, but I think the church is hurting too. Uh, we're going through something, mm-hmm. and it's having devastating effects on the church, on the people uh, of God, the body. And on society, mm-hmm. it, it. I mean, if you can't see it, then yeah. I don't know. Something. Uh, try. I don't know. Open your eyes. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so first up on the schedule. Um, yeah. So a. If you have not heard yet, are you listening? Is everybody listening? Because we have something humongous to tell you right now. If you're on with us right now, listen up. Perk your ears up because we have something humongous to tell you about, okay? We just posted a video about it. It's called The Biggest Announce... No. The Biggest... The hugest? <laughs> the hugest. The, no. <laughs> the huge announcement? The, uh, no. The biggest announcement ever on our channel. Henry's listening. Oh, dang. That's an, that's a, that's a, an, that's ear. an ear emoji. That's an ear. That is awesome. <laughs> Extra credit for you, Henry. That is fantastic. Um, Yeah, so the announcement was on our channel. You need to go, still go watch that video. Not right now. Hold on. Stay with us. <laughs> After. Go the watch that video because we announced the biggest a nat- reveal on our channel ever and it has to do with something that can help connect all of us all of you us you us you come on everybody <laughs> us you us, us you, you us okay you. it can help connect us and you on a more personal level on a more um one-to-one scale if you will yeah um, let's see. Show. Carol's really listening. Whoa, Carol. Sorry, uh, sorry, Henry, but Carol is, um, Carol's is, she's is a, that... a little more attentive. Oh, dang. That's, uh, those are ears with the, uh, the, uh, hearing aids. Oh. Yeah, they're different. See, I didn't even know that there was an ear emoji. I, I was me unaware. We're finding out all kinds of stuff. But hey, so the announcement, the biggest announcement ever was, should we say it or make them go watch the video? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, but let's but, talk about it. But, but it, we go more in depth in the video. Yeah, so. so you still want to go watch the video because we go in depth and we show you everything that is on our Patreon. Patreon. Okay, so we started a Patreon, Okay. And this is something that can really help us continue to make content. Not only continue to make content, but make better content. Yes. More in-depth, bigger, huger content, larger content. Is there any more words for big, big, (laughs) large, huge? Um, We can can really uh, use Patreon to help us to continue making content and make better content. Yeah. And not only that, but... When you see what we did with um, Oregon huge. comments, huge. huge. We got you. This is huge. It, this is all really huge. Um, when you see what we did with our Patreon, uh, 
you can see that we have so many benefits on there for us connecting together on a yeah. personal level. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really going to help us be able to, so that you're not just seeing us. We can get on, we can see you. Yes. We can have a relationship with you yeah. that goes deeper than just you watching our videos. And commenting yeah. on YouTube. And when you're on the fellowship tier, I mean, so many things open up to where you can help with the creation of our videos, yeah. with with the creation of our Patreon content, with Zoom uh, chat, Zoom chat. You you could have Zoom chats with us. Just all kinds of thing. It is the fellowship for a reason because we're fellowshipping. Yeah. So uh, if you want to go check out in the link in the description of this video, um, you can see our Patreon link. You can go check out our Patreon page and. Uh, um, and, and join there and we can connect and really get to know each other better on a personal level. But yeah, so Patreon is not like YouTube. Patreon is just a support platform. So you can go on there and... Uh, You're and, supporting our channel yeah. monthly. Um, but then there's different perks you get for different levels of how much you're supporting yeah. each month. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we yeah. have six levels. And uh, six tiers, I guess, if you will. And those tiers, basically, uh, it, it's 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 a way for us to be able to gain support on a monthly level. So yeah. it's just monthly donations each. But uh, whatever tier you join, there's different benefits you unlock for uh, that tier. So, um, you know, it really just depends on what you want to see, what you want out of the Patreon. If you don't want to give anything, don't feel obligated. Yeah. This is not a pitch in order for you to go join Patreon or else you're not allowed on our live stream or our channel. Not like that at all. No. But Patreon is a way for us to continue to make content and make better content and be supported by you guys. And not only that, but like like I've been saying, grow deeper in our relationship with you guys. Yeah. And then we can all help uh, support each other and help each other grow deeper in Christ. Exactly. It's just a way for those of you that really enjoy uh, our content and want to get to know us more and we want to get you to know you more if you feel led to help support our channel, yeah. this is the way to do it. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and again, check out all the tiers. In fact, here, who wants to see it real quick? I'll bring it up. Yeah. So check this out, okay? Stay with us if you don't want to see this. If you leave now, you're missing everything that you've ever wanted to know about life. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here we go. Here it is. Okay. See it? Everybody see it? Brylin and Lisa. This is our Patreon page. So we have the mustard seed tier, the neighbor, the fellowship, the sower, the Cheerful Giver, and The Good Samaritan. There's a little bit of a theme going on. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. <laughs> with the titles <laughs> of the tiers. <laughs> so, again, we have a whole video that breaks down everything um, going on uh, in each one of these tiers. We break down exactly what you get. Like from the neighbor to the fellowship, you unlock a monthly faith printable, a devotional every two weeks, which that devotional, we would like it to start to be weekly but it's gonna start out every two weeks. And we wanna get you involved in that as well. We wanna help you grow in your talents for either creating or writing. Maybe you love to write. Maybe you love to write devotionals. We would love to have you a part of the team and and help build you up in your strengths yeah. as well. Um, so it's not just about us, it's about us being able to help you as well. in monthly Zoom Hangouts, which, uh, you know, we'll have Zoom hangouts to where we can all hang out together, see each other, and really build relationships with each other. Maybe we all get on a Zoom call, and the camera went off again. There we go. Maybe we all get on a Zoom call, and uh, and 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 we're the last people you guys want to hang out with. Everybody else is talking <laughs> to each other. Everybody else is like, "Oh, hey, good to be. It's good to meet you. This is awesome. We don't need Brian and Lisa anymore." And you ditch us. Maybe that's what you do. That's fine. <laughs> But at least you built some relationships. <laughs> and I'm joking, obviously. But it's a way for us to all get together, see each other, and be friends. Yeah. And love on each other. And you also get, uh, like I said, a, uh, be a member of our creative team. You see this? You can help not only support the channel, but help in the, really the, 
the 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 direction of the channel. Yeah, the types of videos we're doing. Brainstorming ideas, coming up with content, you know, bouncing feedback off of each other. What do yeah. you think of this? No, nah, I don't like. Don't do that. Or yeah, go more this direction. This type of content, we would love that. You can help be a creative member of our team. Yeah. And as we continue to grow, we have lofty ideas for this channel. We uh for 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 really our our ministry, okay? And we would love to bring on people from our Patreon at a later time as we start to grow and as the Lord blesses it, we would love to bring on people to help us um, to hire people as well. Yeah. In the creation of our content, in the creation of our channel and just what we do on this channel. Uh, there, There is... There is a... Uh, coming a time when we are going to need to bring people on to help us. And uh, and I think, you know, when the Lord provides that and blesses that, we would love for those on our Patreon to be like the first pickings. Like, hey, anybody on here know you know, want to do this or help do this? And yeah. Then we can go and we know that we have a dedicated community here. Yeah, right? exactly. And it all starts right here in being a part of that creative team. And then receive a Riggs family Christmas card every year. <laughs> so we're going to send you a Christmas card from our family to yours. Yes. Every single year. Isn't that like I love that because yeah. I think about like just receiving those kind of, receiving cards and things in the mail letters. Yeah. It's just such a wonderful thing that I feel like is overlooked. Now the mail is bills and, mm -hmm. you know, a junk mail. Ads, yeah. And everything's done on email or text or whatever. Like, that's fine. I get it. It's technology. We've moved on. But we don't have to let go of everything. I love good old classic mail. Just getting like a letter or a card yeah. in the mail. It's special. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bring back pen pals. You remember pen pals? Mm -hmm. That used to be a thing before email. I had there a was pen, pen pal. pals. I had <laughs> yeah. a pen pal growing up. Seriously? Legitimately. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. Pen pals. Let's be pen pals. Seriously. <laughs> Let's write each other little sweet nothings and, and just send it in the mail. Yeah. And uh, receive it. There's something about receiving a physical good and reading it and somebody actually putting time and effort into something that does something more to the heart, yeah, to the soul. Um, and you will not be able to convince me otherwise. <laughs> Don't even try. Um, so yeah, so that's the fellowship tier. I love the fellowship tier. That's gonna be 34 cents a day. Um, and, and, and again, we're not trying, this is, th we're excited about this because this opens opportunities for us to grow this channel and to continue to make bigger and better content and up the production and up the content, put out more content and, and put out more than just our videos as well. Putting, putting out, you know, different, uh, uh, like the devotionals and different, uh, you know, things like the, 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 the faith printables mm -hmm. and even doing more writing. I love to write. Mm -hmm. I love writing. Yeah, I know you do. I would love to write a book. <laughs> Seriously. And, it, it, you know, through the support of you guys, that stuff is made possible. So I cannot say enough about uh, what your support means to us more than you know. Genuinely, it, it is more than you know, your support. So uh, if you want to check out our Patreon, you can check it out in the link below and read through all of the tiers and pick the tier that you feel would be best for you and uh, and, help, and and support us. That would be a wonderful blessing to us. So Tom, Tom Hoppins, the Tominator. <laughs> I am so glad you're on with us. You weren't yes. here last time. Yeah, we missed you last time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in fact, we shut the live stream down early last time <laughs> because Tom never showed up. Okay? Do you realize the weight that's on your shoulders, Tom? <laughs> no, actually, the last live stream went for like an hour and a half. Or it was like yeah. It almost was, two we, hours. Yeah. We went two hours without hanging out And we didn't even that's get to bummer. finish our last topic, which we're talking about to tonight yeah. since we didn't talk about it last time. <laughs> which will be, uh, I told Leah that it'd be dedicated to her, but... But yeah, so um, 
which we will do. Yes. But I don't but think Leah's on with us. I don't, I don't know if us. Leah's here. Usually she says that she's here if she's here. So, yeah. I don't know. So, um, so yeah. So that's what today's video is going to be sponsored by. It's going to be sponsored by you guys, um, really, and, and the Patreon page. Yes. So, um, thank you for going and just checking it out. Even yeah. if you don't sign up, thank you for checking out our Patreon page and just looking at the tiers. And, um, and, you know. and again, this isn't pressure. If you can't financially give or support or you just don't feel led to, that's completely okay. This isn't to pressure anyone or anything. Um, but we would really appreciate your prayers no matter what. Yeah. Just praying for our channel. If all you can um, do is pray for our channel, that's fantastic. That's yes. all we, that, that's, that's the most, that's, uh, that's what we would ask you to do yes. anyway, regardless, yes. please. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so again, oh, I just want to say as well, uh, Patreon also opens up the ability for us to have more personal communications like, uh, live chats and, 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 and message boards and stuff like that um, for us to connect in a way that YouTube doesn't really give us the opportunity to. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a comment section, there's a live chat, but you can only do so much with that, you know. Yeah. Um, but with, uh, with Patreon on there is like its own ecosystem and we can... And it's like a smaller community too, so... Yeah, so we can really grow in our relationship with you guys um, and just have a personal connection, so... Go check that out. Thank you again. Uh, so let's talk about some news tonight. Uh, that took up half the video. <laughs> um, let's see here. What am I doing? Whoops. No. Are we going to our article? Yeah. So let me bring this up. Let's look at the comments real quick and see what people are saying. Everybody was saying hi to Tom. Hi, Tom. Tom. Tom is a... Uh, it's the cool kid on the block, obviously. Uh, Tom says you need to step up your Twitter game. <laughs> yeah. I know. Seriously, this is what happens with Twitter. I get on Twitter. I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to talk. You know, I'm having a conversation with Tom. Me and Tom were talking on Twitter. And I'm like, yeah, this is great, fantastic. I can't wait to hear what Tom has to say, like hearing the story about when he met uh, a comedian we both like. And I go on there and I'm like, and then I get off Twitter because it's late or whatever. And then I go and then I go days. And I'm like, I just forget about Twitter. I don't forget about Tom. I just forget about Twitter. I just go, yeah. wait, what? Because I'm not used to it. I got to get yeah. used to it. So we Tom, literally I'm sorry. just created that Twitter account. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. We're going to step up our Twitter game. You know, and a part of having Patreon is being able to step up, step up our game everywhere. Yeah. All of our content from YouTube to Twitter to Instagram to our Patreon in, in, in and of itself, because there's going to be a lot of exclusive content on Patreon as well, like all the devotionals and um, you know just certain uh, live chats that we have on there with you guys, uh, and you know other content that you will have to you know sign up to find out about. But yeah, not going to give it all away. Um, but uh, but yeah, so. Aaron are, said, "Baby steps, you got this." Yes, oh, Aaron, exactly. Thank you, thank so you much. Aaron. <laughs> I know you, one you step me at down. a time. <laughs> you calm me down, Aaron. Thank you, thank you. Um, so Tom said, "Tweets are where it's at." Sharing little bite-sized chunks of truth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, tell you what, Tom, we step up our Twitter game. You step up your Twitter game. Deal deal well i mean that's did you just make a deal for tom that's tom's decision <laughs> lisa just lisa just dealed for well, you you looked she at me said, when you said deal so it was like okay, okay. no i mean that's fine i mean it, it, so you are now beholden oh he said deal okay deal cool <laughs> so you are beholden in a court of law by that deal that lisa made for you okay oh, legal binding sorry tom <laughs> What else can we deal here? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, appreciate y'all being here. So do you want to talk a little bit about the Southern Baptist Convention and what's been going on there? Yeah. So if you guys have not heard uh, recently, and we will discuss more about this later, we, w we would love to take your guys' uh, questions and just kind of chit-chat back and forth in just a little bit. But we do want to cover some of this. Southern Baptist Convention stuff going on because a lot of people think that 
the scandals with the Southern Baptist Convention doesn't affect them mm-hmm. because they're not a Southern Baptist or they're not a part of the Southern Baptist Convention or they're not a Baptist at all. You know, they're like, well, I'm, uh, I'm this over here. Or I'm, I'm reformed or, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like, not that you can't be reformed in Southern Baptist. I'm saying like, we're so quick to say, you know, I go to a Calvary Chapel or I go to a non-denominational or whatever. Like, we think it doesn't affect us. Yeah. Well, and I, I will does. say, too, there's actually a lot of churches that are a part of the Southern Baptist Convention yeah. that are not actually Southern Baptist churches, too. Yeah. So oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's In fact, to point out too. like one example, Harvest Christian Fellowship. Yeah, which we used to go to towards the end of when we were going there. They actually joined the Southern Baptist Convention. Yep. So if you're familiar with Greg Laurie and Harvest... Um, Harvest Christian Fellowship, then you would know that they, well, I, I don't know if you would know, but they announced it and it's, they made it pretty clear that they were joining forces with the uh, Southern Baptist Convention. And it kind of was a big thing at the time because there was a lot of what's called the liberal drift in the Southern Baptist Convention. Yeah. Which has been going on for years now. And it's been a huge issue. Um, and uh, so, real quickly, I just want to say, Jerry says, hi guys, did you get my email last night or this morning? Jerry. Yeah. Yes, we got your email, and we saw it just a couple, just a a couple hours ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we haven't been able to respond to it, but we will, Jerry. Um, everything you said is crazy. Like it's, you know, all the, yeah, we know TJ. Yeah. We know who TJ is. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's crazy. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where you, you do question like, you know, this is like, the, the like the coincidences are so yeah. out there that it's yeah. like, whoa, crazy. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Jerry, um, we'll get back to you on that and thank you for joining us. Yes. But, so with the Southern Baptist Convention uh, and everything going on with the liberal drift, uh, liberal drift that's been going on for several years, you know, there's, um, it's really hard to say that it's a huge surprise on the scandals that have been going on. And if you haven't heard, then uh, we'll show you here that the Southern Baptist Convention releases a secret list of pastors, church leaders accused of abuse and misconduct. Now, I get it. If I don't say certain words, it's so that YouTube doesn't trigger the, trigger system. the system and get this video taken down. Yeah. So I'm not going to say this word, okay? <laughs> I, it, last, <laughs> I time, I last time we did this, <laughs> last time we did this, I, I, there, I was like, we were reading uh, an article and I was like skipping words that YouTube will trigger and get us taken down because yeah. how dare you talk about yeah. that? Um, stand up for truth. You're out of here. Yeah. Um, they try to get you at every little thing. So I'm not going to say certain words. You don't need to remind me in the comments. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is what it is, right? Uh, that's a nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody Bryce, want a shirt? Bri's going to do some shopping while we read the article. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, do you mind hanging out for a minute? I'm going to do some shopping. Um, no, I'm going to get rid of that. So. <laughs> On Thursday night, top Southern Baptist convention leaders released a 205-page list of pastors and church leaders accused of abuse outside of and within the convention. So like Lisa said before, within the Southern Baptist convention, there's churches that are uh, aligned with, or ah, what's the right word, Um, that are a part of the system but aren't Southern Baptist convention churches. They're not Southern Baptist churches, but they are churches that are... Affiliated. Affiliated, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. It was in the black hole of where all the words go when I where need the, them. The words that you need to say. Yeah. <laughs> but they're they're affiliated with Southern Baptist Convention, and, they, and, and Southern Baptist Convention supports them in certain ways, yeah. usually financially or with resources, and, but they're not a Southern Baptist church. Yeah. So... There's all kinds of different churches um, on this list. Most of them are, uh, uh, you know, or all of them, uh, not most of them, 
all of them are either Southern Baptist Convention churches or affiliated with Southern Southern Baptist Baptist Convention. Convention. Until now, the list, which was revealed to have existed in the Guidepost Solutions SBA, uh, SBC abuse report released to the public on Sunday, had remained undisclosed by former staff for over a decade. So check this out, you guys. Over a decade, for over 10 years, this list was known to the SBC up council, upper echelon the, the, the leaders and for any leader to kind of say, well, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, well, okay. Well, you can't really say that every leader, I guess a part of it that, um, I don't want to play the guilty until proven innocent yeah game here. Yeah. However, I will say that the first thing that needs to be done is the leaders need to confess to what they knew. Yeah. And this needs to be something that stops turning into protect our own. Yeah. There needs Cover to be... up sin in order to protect our own. Yeah. That's not biblical. All that does is allow sin to continue and continue to grow. Yeah. Um, there needs to be transparency and honesty. Yep. Exactly. According to the Associated Press, more than 700 names are on the list, which only includes people accused of this kind of misconduct between the year 2000 and 2019. So you see that this is this is horrible stuff. Over 700 names. And those are just the people that have been caught. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um... So you, when you, you know, uh, the church is very good at, and, and I can say that we know this from experience, having been, uh, we were, that word's in the black hole of my brain, uh, we uh, interns. <laughs> so, I was like, I was going to say, well, we've been interns. Yeah, we were interns. Served. What are you looking for? Yeah, we were yeah. interns at one church when we were both younger. That's actually how we met. We yes. were interning at a church together, and that's how we met. Um, and we, and then I worked at uh, another church. And both of these churches are ten to fifteen. We're, we're ten to fifteen thousand member churches. Yeah. So they were they, by all intents and purposes mega churches. Smaller mega churches. Yeah. Smaller. Those are those are mega churches. Oh no, I know, but there's yeah. Well, I mean, we're just talking about Joel but, Alstein. He has yeah. like with like a hundred thousand people. I mean, that's <laughs> different because those are that's not even that's not a church. Yeah, that's a convention center. Um, uh, motivational but, speech. Motivational speech. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we we've been a part of mega churches. We've been a part of several churches, and um, you do see that. When, when you're on the inside of a church, there is a certain mind frame and a certain way of going about things. And I get it because it, it's – you get close to people, especially in ministry, mm-hmm. and your heart goes – well, they're, they're, they're in ministry. They're, their heart's in the right place. I know them. Yeah. Like I know that, that they're a, a, a decent person. Yeah, exactly. I thought. Like yeah. I, I know them. And so you want to protect them. Yeah. So of course you don't want whatever sin is being committed or whatever um, to get out for everybody to see because you don't want them to be embarrassed by it. Mm-hmm. And that's an easy. That's easy to get caught up in. It's you, yeah. It's easy e- to um, want e- to overlook things. Even if you think that you're above it, like, well, no, that's not biblical. Yeah. That's not right. That's not. Yeah. The Bible says to to call out sin. And then at, at a certain point, you're actually told to call out sin to the entire congregation. Mm-hmm. And the Bible does tell us not to fight, uh, you know, basically not to take each other to court because how how ridiculous will you look mm-hmm. that we can't even settle matters between each other. So Christians are suing each other and taking each other to court and the world sitting back going, that's the church? Yeah. The Bible says don't be foolish like that. Don't do that. 
take care of the matter amongst yourselves. And and so it's it's really hard to, uh, I guess, think about someone extremely close to you that gets caught up in like a sin, whatever it is. I'm not I'm not necessarily talking about this kind of sin, but in 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 whatever, like. Your first instinct is, man, I can't wait till everybody finds out about this. No. I mean, it shouldn't be. I hope not. No. But it's so easy that when you have a personal connection with people to want to protect them and say, let's de- let's deal with this. But with this kind of sin, where it affects, you can go and read the list. It's astonishing. Like, yeah. it's, it's horrible. Um... And it's like your mind goes, how can you even go there? How can you be in ministry? How can you call yourself a believer? How can you walk with God and do this? I, everybody can say, I don't know. That's, that's so foreign to me. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, wow, that's that's incredible. And and hopefully it is. We should li- we should, you know, especially leaders that are in the church are called to live above reproach. Yes, exactly. Are called to live to a higher standard. So if you can't handle that standard, then get out of the church. As a leader, yeah. Um, and a lot of times you wouldn't believe how many people that we've seen, I've seen, over the years. Again, working at a very large church, interning at another, that they were leaders within the church or even pastors sometimes that were just in that position because their dad was a leader at the church. So then they were a leader at the church and they had no business being a leader at the church. Mm -hmm. Or they were a leader at the church because... I guess they weren't able to succeed in, you know, a, a, another realm of work or whatever, but they were able to get in on a church and they're able to say the right things and sound cunning and and uh, get past the discernment of the other leaders or something. And so yeah. they're now a part of the church uh, or maybe the church well, was looking hired, for a, They're hired for talent, not necessarily yeah. based off of character. Yeah, and I was yeah. just going to say, maybe the church was looking to hire somebody that could speak better or be more popular for the kids or whatever it is, um, or you know, whatever ministry. And so they hire for popularity. We had something like this happen at the a previous church we were a part of, and it had yeah. devastating effects. Yes. Devastating effects on the church. Yeah. Um, and I want to be clear when we're talking about this, we're not doing this to trash the church or any of the previous churches we've been a part of. No, we're doing this because obviously there's a lot of issues going on within the church and we, as members of the church need to be making sure that what's happening in the church is biblical that we're actually following God's design for the church so that this kind of stuff can't flourish. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, man, I want to keep up with your comments. I see there's I a know. lot of good comments. Here, let's look Jamie! <laughs> didn't even, oh, Jamie oh, didn't even see. Thank you for joining us, Jamie. Jamie's holding the <laughs> fort down. Thank you for being here, Jamie. As always. Um... So, I want to read some of these comments, but I, I want to keep talking about this. So, yeah, we are definitely not trashing the church or talking down on the church or saying that the church is bad. The church is good. The church is the body of Christ. Yeah. Uh, and we I, care deeply about the church. <laughs> absolutely. I think it's. Uh, I, I think it's because of the church. Our is the only reason. Is the only way our society can turn around Mm -hmm. i mean through the bible a a bible-based church yeah the body of christ working yeah working together through the work of the holy spirit and the truth of god's word we can turn things around if god is willing and that is his will yeah um i think that the church will be used for that but it doesn't mean that the state of the church today is perfect. 
No. There's a lot wrong. And you see polls like this. Everybody watching? If you're chatting or looking away, perk your ears this way. Turn your eyes here. Shocking new poll. You probably you might have seen the video we did on this, but 37% of US pa pastors do not hold a biblical worldview. If that doesn't No, only 37% of US pastors hold a biblical worldview. Oh, you see you see on my screen right here? It's co I, I have part of my screen covered and there's other okay. Yeah, you Sorry, can't no, see it. No, I did not see it. I did a video on this too. <laughs> There was another poll that just released that talked about evangelicals I was trying to find. Oh, okay. So it did evangelicals. So I had that yeah. wrong. I misspoke. Did that wake you up? <laughs> Shocking new poll. Only 37% of U.S. pastors hold a biblical worldview. I wish it was the other way around. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be better than it being this way around. But yeah. really, I wish it was 100% exactly. of pastors had a biblical worldview. Yeah. So you see that 37% of U.S. pastors have a biblical worldview. That means that the Bible is shaping their view on life. Their Bible is shaping their view on how they conduct themselves, on how they teach those that they are given leadership over or you know entrusted to lead. Or That is astonishing yeah. and ext is extremely sad. I think that's this is one of the issues right here. Our very leaders, so many of them, aren't even holding the Bible up to what it is supposed to be and what no. what they're supposed to be teaching yeah. their congregations. So yeah, it's... most pe yeah, exactly, exactly. And you're seeing the devastating effects of church, of churches that, in fact, uh, the church that we had, but we had met at mm -hmm. actually. That church started when Lisa was, li we, we were both little. I mean, we were little, little. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it, it were actually, we born? It might have started even before I was born. I didn't okay. start going there until I was like around five years old. Okay. But I basically, okay. yeah, but going the to that church. Yeah, the mission statement of the church that we met at, the whole reason for their existence was to create a church for people who don't like church. That should be a stunning thing to hear. Not in a good way. Yeah. We have to create church for people who don't like church. So what do you have to do in that church in order to appease people who don't like church? You have to take the Bible out of it. You have to take God out of it, the God of the Bible. You have to take Jesus out of it. You have to take sin out of it. You have to take the cross out of it. You have to take... The fact that we are wretched, sinful human beings in need of a Savior. You have to remove the gospel in order to make a church that people like over church that they don't like. I mean, yeah. it, like, uh, I, okay, I said that wrong. Hold on. You have to remove the gospel in order to have a church, to, to try to create a church for people that don't like church. Yeah. The point of that statement is not like, well, we're just going to be more lively and we're just going to talk faster and, and make messages shorter, you know? And it's like, we're going to make a church you don't have to wear a suit to or something like that. It wasn't none of that. The whole point is we're going to create a church that the world likes. That's the point. Yeah. We're going to create a church that appeases the world. And you cannot do that. Those do not mix. Mm -hmm. The world hates Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus tells us that if we follow him, the world's going to hate us too. Um, and the devastating effects of... Whoops. The devastating effects of, the, of things like only 37% of pastors have a biblical worldview... That means less than half of all pastors have a biblical worldview. That means if there's 100,000 churches, uh, I'm, there's more than that. Um, but I'm just saying. As an example. If, okay, just say there's 100 churches. That means 
three of them have... What's the number I'm looking for here? 37. 30, okay, 37. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that, I mean, that's... I, I'm trying to wrap my head around how th- it's even possible, really. Yeah. I just do not understand that number. Yeah. Um, and you just see... And, and, and you the church goes into protection mode and tries to protect its uh, protect its own at all costs they don't deal with sin properly and you're seeing this is the effects of that something like the southern baptist convention and a part of that is the liberal drift as well that's been going on you see pastors like matt chandler david platt uh, uh jd greer I mean, these guys are some of the most. I, you, if they, um, man, it's just it's sad to see, but these guys could be mega. I mean, they are mega pastors, but they, for some reason, something got to them. And they completely turned to society for help, Mm -hmm. for the world, to the world for help. Yeah. And, you know, they're now pushing, you know, critical race theory. Our video is going to get flagged now. You just said the word. I know. I just said the word. This is what's (laughs) going to happen. the system. This is what's going to happen now, you guys. I just said that. And what's going to happen is our video is going to <laughs> get uh, a flag on it and we're going to have to repeal it and stuff like that. Appeal it. Um, but that's okay. Speak the truth anyway, right? So. We have to like speak in code. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Sometimes. Um, but thanks for everybody that's just jumping on with us we appreciate you being on here with us if you can hit that thumbs up button it would help you to push this video out to more people more people can jump on with us but um but yeah so thanks for hitting that thumbs up button um so yeah so you're seeing a lot of these guys like david platt jd greer matt chandler a part of the southern baptist they're 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 bringing up all these different you know, ideas of, uh, you know, the, basically the, how do I say this without getting flagged? <laughs> Goodness. It, it really stinks having to be censored. Can we censored. spell? Can we Wait, spell? What catches if we spell? I don't know. <laughs> spell the W-O-K-E. Words. Okay, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, they're they're extremely you know uh, everything that that's popular in society um they are advocating and it's to me it comes off like wolves in sheep's clothing yeah i don't understand the mindset there and it's having and it's this kind of stuff that's why it was such a big deal you know uh they were talking about possibly someone like vody bachman being the president of the sbc Yes. That would be amazing because Vody Bachman, <laughs> a wonderful pastor, a wonderful teacher, speaks check the out, truth. Check out, check out, um, uh, Vody Bachman. Mm-hmm. Vody Bachman. It just a wonderful. In fact, maybe we could type his name in the chat here, so that people know what to type in. Yeah. I don't know how to spell his last name. Do you know how to spell it? I think you actually spelled it right. Let me make sure. Um, let me make sure we have his name right here. Yeah, B A U C H A M. I had it right. Yeah. Oh no no M at the end. Almost had it right. There you go. Okay. Wait. Oh, I had the wrong. Okay, I had the M wrong. I had it twisted around. That's what it was. <laughs> That's right, right? Yeah. Vody Bachman. Was I saying Bachman? I think you were. Oops. Gosh, I hate that. I- I'm so bad with names. Bachman. Vody Bachman. Um, thanks, Tom, for putting that in there. Uh, appreciate that. But Vody Bachman, 
Bark him. <laughs> you just said it again. <laughs> okay. Vody Bakum, <laughs> the president of the SBC, a godly, trustworthy man, as far as we know. Um, being the leader of the SBC, the SBC flipped out, tried to push against it. Why? Because Vody Bachman is a Bible-believing, trustworthy man. <laughs> yep. And everything he believes about the world he sees the world through a biblical lens a biblical worldview in so. fact he has a, he has an awesome book on a biblical worldview called fault, uh, fault lines yeah and um in fact tom tom says brylan have you read his book fault lines um no i have not read the entire thing but i have started it and yeah yeah I, and to see a man like Vody Bauckham saying these kind of things mm-hmm. is, it's just wonderful. It is. Because it's not about race. It's about, do you know, do you have the love of God in your life? Are you following what the Bible has to say? Do you have a biblical world view? That's what it comes down to. Yeah. And you're seeing the devastating effects on the church, on on things like the Southern Baptist Convention, where they don't want anybody like Vody Bauckham mm-hmm. around them because they know that he would come in and straighten things up. And if that happens, then there's going to be a lot more stuff that comes out, other than this 200 page, 700 names of people that have been caught doing this or that. I think there's a lot more to cover up within the SBC, unfortunately, and they're trying their hardest. To keep it under wraps. Yeah. I wish that wasn't the case. These are fellow believers. These are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And I think that um, we desperately need to care about this. We have to care about this because it affects the body of Christ. Yeah. We're not of Apollos. (laughs) We're not of anybody else that tries to come. We're of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? Right. Can I get an amen? You know, I've never said that. Can I get an amen? (laughs) I'm just picturing everybody right now. Amen. Amen. I hope so. Be cool. Um, So, yeah, check out Vody Bauckham and his book, Fault Lines. Have you read it, Tom? Has anybody else read it? Um, So let's see what we've missed here in the chat. Uh... Let me see. Ooh, lots of chats on here. We gotta go way back. I Hello. Know. Sorry, we weren't keeping up with the comments as we were talking. Um, this is okay. So we're gonna get to some of your chats now. Just see what you got, what you guys are thinking. Um, if you weren't on earlier, I just want to say that we started a Patreon page, mm-hmm. uh, and we would love for you guys to check out the Patreon page. It's just a way for you to support us and to help us to grow. Not only our channel, but to grow uh, our content, make bigger and better content, um, and to just be blessed. It would be a blessing if you guys would, you know, check out the description below. We have our Patreon link in there. You can go check out our Patreon page and just consider supporting us. You don't have to, but if you would consider it, that would be a blessing. Go check out our page. Check out what tier looks good to you. Yes. And make it happen. But please, no matter what, support us through prayer. Through prayer, absolutely. We need all the prayer we can get. Um, so your prayers are greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Um, Tom says, abuse is so rampant everywhere, it seems no organization is untouched by it. I think pastors and teachers get in an echo chamber and they feel above the law. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a yeah. good point, Tom. Um, some of these chats are uh, a few minutes old, so bear with us. Uh, Brylin is right. When I seen my leader ripping another one apart on social media, my instinct wasn't to say you need to stop, but to just cut away. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you see things like that, and your first instinct is to go into like protection mode. And uh, we have to, the Bible's very clear that we have to rebuke those 
in sin. In fact, let's look up uh, Matthew 18. Check this out, everybody. So, you see here, I'm going to have a video on this actually coming up. I'm working on it right now. Um, and if you join our Patreon, you can help with the creation of it because you can join our creative team if you join the fellowship tier or above. Just throwing that out there. So Matthew 18, 5 says, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, listen how important this is, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. If we as believers cause another believer to stumble, to fall into sin, to tempt them with sin and cause them to sin, it would be better for us to have a millstone, which is a stone in those days that was like 3,000 pounds, and it took a donkey, it took a mule, like uh, an, an, a very large animal to be able to pull it. And it, what it did was it went around this, uh, it was like a wheel, uh, a wheel-shaped millstone, and it would crush grain. And people couldn't move it. It was 3,000 pounds or heavier. It would be better for you to have that tied around your neck and thrown into the sea. Wow. To die. That would be better for you than to receive the wrath of God from causing another believer to sin. Do you hear that? And then it goes on to say, Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations, temptations come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And then it goes on to, you know, if your hand causes you to sin, if your foot causes you to sin, if your eye causes you to sin, cut it off, rip it out. It, it, it Stop sinning. We talked about this in our first John study. But then look down here at verse 15. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by evidence of two or three witnesses. If we refuse to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church... Let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So we are told that sin that is against us by another believer or someone in the church, we should confront them and help them to repentance, help lead them to repentance. If they don't listen, you've got to bring in some other leaders with you. Hey, this is a serious thing. Still doesn't listen, you're told to call it out publicly. Now, these cover ups with the Southern Baptist Convention deal with abuses that are beyond what the church should just say, okay, well, we dealt with this, let's cover it up now. Yeah. Don't let this get out. This is this affects other people's lives here. This is these these actions are demonic. Mm-hmm. These actions here, with this list of abuses from the SBC that the SBC released of over 700 people, those actions are of Satan. Those are not of God. Those are not true leaders in the church. And you see that they knew about it for 10 years. And this was stuff that was going on from 2000 to 2019. This is serious stuff. I think we absolutely need another reformation in the church. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this last night. Yeah. We need another reformation in the church. You know, it's funny because that study that cited, um, I think it was this one. No, it wasn't this one. It was uh, 
Yeah, okay, um, let me see here. Let me see if it was this one. No, it wasn't this one. No, it might have been this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, despite the gloomy data, Barna offered a glimmer of hope by noting that you cannot fix something unless you know it's broken. Okay, mm -hmm. we know it's broken, so we should fix it. Okay, no, it wasn't this one. Okay, so it was this one, I think. The Gen Z one. Oh, this is a plus article. Okay, but basically what it was was... It was, it had, it, it was talking about the hope behind everything in the, the, the same study that showed that I think it was the study where 40% of Gen Z believe that Jesus sinned. Mm -hmm. And we just put a video out about that on our, 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 we just put out a video on that on our channel. Yesterday. Go check out that video. It was put up yesterday. It's called uh, Gen Z thinks what about Jesus or something like something that. Something similar. <laughs> um, and in that study, they also were studying and, and revealed that 75% of those they studied, I think it was Gen Z, I think it was multiple generations, but it was 75% of people, especially within Gen Z, that had a curiosity about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They want to know the truth of the Bible, and we're not giving them that. In fact, you'll see mega churches, you know, the churches that are the the Hillsongs and the uh, Westlake and the Elevations. Lakewood. And the, Lakewood, yeah. yeah. Westlake's a different church, sorry. I don't know what Westlake is. Um, I, I believe they're a church that was affiliated with Hillsong. I did a video on them. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, that yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> uh, and all these mega churches, in, in uh, um What's his name? I was just watching him. Uh, his dad. Um, oh my gosh, my my brain is not working tonight. Uh, names are my worst enemy. Uh, man, I, I just uh, I just did a. Give me some context. I know. I'm I can trying. help you if you give I'm me trying. some context. <laughs> I'm trying. He was his, his dad was the pastor as well. Um, now he's. But anyway, the point is, is that a lot of these churches, they're, they're, uh, they'll say that, well, it's evangelicals that are causing all this to happen. When you look at the actual studies of what churches believe, evangelicals aren't even a part of the church anymore, it seems like. Mm. It seems like, like, like you said, 37%, like we said earlier, 37% of pastors don't have a biblical worldview. And you're seeing society completely go to shambles. Yeah. But it's because of the truth. That's not how that works. It's only by the truth. I think that being reignited within the church that we can. Yeah. Find a remedy. Exactly. I think we've seen um, a large majority maybe majority yeah, of the American church just water down the word of God and create very cultural, worldly looking churches. And they don't look like the actual church and, and what they don't present what the word of God actually says. And it looks nothing different than the world. Yeah. What do you expect? our society to be like from that if we're no longer being the light to yeah. the world <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that jesus tells us to be <laughs> exactly um I, 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 let's let's read some uh some of these uh comments here yeah. um so i just want to say let's see jerry said people and churches need strong foundation in their faith and beliefs checks and balances would tell you to get back to your first love when you get too big. You can get numb to everyday events. That is exactly right, Jerry. Um, and then Al, uh, Alan? Is it Alan? A Alan? Alan, I think. Alan? Alan. Alan Jin? Uh, did you used to go to my church, Brylan? What was your church? Maybe, <laughs> maybe? I missed it. Maybe I, I missed know. it. Uh, maybe I missed it up here. 
Well, I left the state after it seemed to you. Okay, yeah, let us know um, what your church was, if you're still on with us, and I'll tell you if I went to your church. But yeah, right on, Jerry. Thanks for sharing that. Um, 37% do, yeah. So I was corrected by Abigail. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Vicent, sorry, we're trying to get our... So Yolri makes a good point. 63% are no pastors as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We completely agree. <laughs> yeah. Great point, Yori. Um, let's see here. Sorry, trying to get our uh, chat back in order here. It got kind of backed up. It wasn't moving. Let's see here. Brylin and Lisa, hello. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Nancy. Jerry says they become lovers of self. That is exactly right. Crystal says it's not helpful to create churches to aid the world as it is telling us we need to appease our flesh with shorter sermons, bigger, brighter lights, and less talking about dying to self for Christ. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Wonderfully yeah. put, Crystal. Um, okay, let me uh, uh, let me see. Okay, yes, we need to pray. Okay, let me ask you guys this because I've been thinking of this all week. In my current church, someone struck someone's child. The pastor was brought in and said he would talk to the parent. I said it wasn't enough and they need to be brought in front of the church to be reprimanded. Yeah, you hit my child first. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, well, I don't want to say anything too rash on here, but... You ain't going to be hitting my child without there being repercussions, first and foremost. Um, and, yeah, you, you don't you don't hit someone's child and then just brush it off as like a, oh, well, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it. Uh, we'll, we'll. No. Yeah. That's that serious. That needs to be called out. <laughs> That's serious stuff and not good at all. Hey, y'all, if you're here with us, hit that like button. It would help you to push this video out to more people. We'd really appreciate it. And you can find our Patreon link in the description below. We'd appreciate it if you go check out our Patreon and consider supporting us on there. It would really mean a lot. And you get so many cool benefits. We get to know you personally. We're going to be best friends. <laughs> Yori, Vadi Bookman is awesome. Yes, he is. Let's see, I'm just going to go down. Get back down to here. Okay. Nelson Baker. Nelson, what's up? My man, thank you, Nelson, for that super chat. Yes, thank you. That is a you. huge blessing. Um, $5 super chat, that is wonderful. Thank you so much, Nelson. Seriously, anybody that wants to uh, give us a super chat or uh, help us out financially in any way, it is uh, a wonderful blessing to us, seriously. So thank you for doing that and considering that. Would you agree if the church was more of an example in transparency in the sanctification process more Christians would trust the forgiveness of God. Hmm. Oh, that's that's actually, uh, man, that's a great question. You know, a lot of times I think we think that the more that we talk about, uh, I guess, the more that the church comes off as actually having people in it that are sinners— that have been redeemed by Christ, we think, oh, we can't give off that persona. Yeah. And then people from the outside look in and say, oh, they just think they're a bunch of perfect goody two-shoes. Nothing ever goes wrong with them, yeah, right? Exactly. They're, they're hypocrites. Um, but yeah, I think the, the, the message of the gospel, the message of the love of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection is the message that needs to be taught. We need to be taught that we're sinners in need of a savior in that we are inherently wretched. We are inherently bad, inherently on the wrong side. And our, our uh, um, default destination is eternal separation from God. Unless we recognize and confess our sins before a holy God. Right? Yeah, because of Jesus. We need to be taught this. 
We need to be shown this and we need to live this in the church. I think transparency in the church would be wonderful. I think that the Bible calls for that. That doesn't mean that the church needs to give an account to the world or needs to say, come before the council of the world and say, you know, here's everything that's been going on within our walls. I think, I think the church should absolutely take care of matters as biblically stated. Mm-hmm. We are to confront sin. And if that sin isn't recognized by the sinner, the one that committed the sin, then there's further actions that need to be taken. As, you know, even as far as calling it out in front of the church and then essentially kicking them out of the church. And then letting them, letting God, you know, uh, do His work there. Let letting God's will be done in that person's life. Yeah. Um. And again, too, when we're specifically talking about leaders and pastors, there is a very specific um, uh, set of character. Uh, What's the qualifications? I cannot think of that word. Qualifications that need to be there that scripture gives us. Yeah. Um, In Titus, I believe it is. And I think even a lot of Christians, going back to, you know, the transparency and the sanctification process, I think a lot of Christians might look around and we're so afraid to be open and honest about our struggles or about um, our personal dealings. Um, uh, Let me... Adjust this camera here real quick. So, here we go. Um, there we go. Is that better? I was getting kind of cut off there for a second. <laughs> All right. It, uh, a lot of Christians might feel that, you know, it, they have to hold back. If they confess what they're struggling with, what the temptations are that are pull, that are starting to pull them away from... Um, walking in righteousness, walking in purity, then they feel like, well, I, you can easily feel judged. I get that. Yeah. I understand that. Um, and we have to be open and willing to look at each other and say, I am listening. Tell me what's going on. We, we should be able to confess not only our sins to one another, as mm-hmm. the Bible tells us to do. Yeah. But to show grace in yes. our response to that sin yeah. and to show forgiveness. Because believe it or not, you and me, we're not above falling to those exact same sins. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that you're above falling to. Nothing. And as soon as you think you are, you just fell. Yeah. At some point, yeah. you're going to. Because your pride is telling you, I am above that. That's not me. I don't struggle with that. I don't deal with that. Yeah. So, yeah, we absolutely need more transparency. I think we absolutely need to be a church that is more open and willing to hear each other's faults, temptations, and to say, I hear you, and we're going to work through this together. I can tell you right now that... God tells us, the Bible tells us, that temptation will never be too much for us to to bear, to overcome. We can overcome temptation. Mm -hmm. Temptation will never be so much that we don't have a way out. The Bible tells us we will have a way out. Yeah. God will provide, always yeah. provide a way out of temptation. So, and, yeah. oh, sorry, go I was no, going to add, and scripture tells us to watch and be prayerful that um, when temptation sure. comes, you know, yeah. we are prepared, basically. Yeah. Um, and again, just being in the word, what did Jesus do when he was tempted by Satan himself in the wilderness? Yeah. He used scripture to defeat satan's temptations we have to know the word what it says 
So when temptation comes, we need to be prayerful and know the word. So when we know temptations come, come sorry, when temptation comes, we know the scripture to refute that temptation. Yeah. And this isn't a one-way street either. This isn't just about the church needs to be more open. Mm -hmm. The church needs to be more accepting of me being a sinner and listen to me and transparency in the church and the church, the church, the church. You and I need to be more open to the Bible, to Scripture, to what the Word has to say. And we need to set aside what the Bible says or we, we need to set aside what's in us where the Bible clearly teaches um, how to live. We need to set aside in us what is sinful or lacking. Whatever's in us that says, I, I don't know if I agree with that in the Bible, then you're wrong. Yeah. There is no, well, maybe... Maybe I don't agree with this, but but that that's okay. That's okay, but not that. I don't. Mm-hmm. That's really weird. Does that even apply today? Yeah. No, stop that. The Bible's right, and you are wrong. Yeah. We have to be. This is a. This isn't a one way street. It's not just the church get its act together. The church is the body of Christ, and we need to own up, and realize that there is a responsibility within us where we have to understand what the Bible says. We have to be biblically sufficient, not deficient. We have to know the Word of God, and we have to live out the Word of God. Yeah. And until us as believers are willing to submit to the Word of God, I know that word is a bad word now, but we have to submit to the Word of God. And it's only then that I think churches will be bold enough to enact more, you know, uh, to to get better. Because the church is the body of Christ. It is us. It's not like the leaders of the church right now or some special council. It's like, no, we as the body of Christ need to accept what the word of God has to say and start to live it out. And that's when the church and the body can be held accountable and... Um, the work starts in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, we would love to continue going Hey, real quick, you know, before we call it a night, would you consider checking out the link in the description below and, uh, checking out our Patreon page and just considering if any of the, uh, the tiers on our Patreon page look like something that you want to be a part of. Because we would really appreciate your support. It would mean a lot to us. And it would really go a long way in helping us create bigger and better content. um, And just continue to grow. Stay sufficient um, in creating content and bringing content every day. Yeah. As well as all of the exclusive content and and, and things that we want to do with our Patreon. You can go check out what we have on our Patreon and join one of the tiers. You would bless us, and hopefully we can bless you as well yes. when you join because we will get to know each other on a more personal basis. Um, and we can just grow together. Yeah. That's the thing about Patreon that I can't stress enough is that we're going to be able to have a personal relationship with you. <laughs> yep. How is that not? I mean, that benefits us more because you, you're you're watching us right now, but we don't see you. We want to see you. We want to know you. We want to get to know you. Yeah, we want the relationship to go both ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just want to say again, Nelson, I hope that answered your question. Thank you for that super chat. Um, that donation really helps us yes, more than really you know. Yes, really appreciate that. So thank you for that. Um, and Stephanie said she signed up for the Patreon for the neighbor tier. Thank you yes. very much, Thank Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. We're right excited on. to see you on there. <laughs> right on, Stephanie. Um, whoops, where am I? Oh, there we go. Um, so, yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind going and checking out Patreon, you can read all the good stuff over there. And Jerry, got your email. Thank you for sending that. Um We'll, uh, we'll be in contact with you. Jerry, go check out our Patreon page. I have a feeling that uh, 
we're gonna have a good connection here yeah. with you. <laughs> but uh, but thank you everybody. Thank you Jamie for uh, holding the fort down. Yes. As everybody else knows, her God wins. Thank you, Jamie, helping us out with the comments. Um. Yeah, Abigail says, unfortunately, most people are biblically illiterate and yeah. therefore aren't equipped to actually live like the church. I know it, it, it really comes down to knowledge of the Bible and understanding of God's word. And um, yeah, but you know what, you guys, we're going to go for tonight. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, Dana. Whoa. Hello. Oh, Dana. No, don't be sorry to ask. Let's pray for Dana's son. And um, let's pray for... Carol. Okay. You want to get... Yeah. Sorry, guys. I have to head out because I have to go... Well, just go get her real quick. Okay. All right. Um, Our baby girl's crying. Um, so, okay, sorry guys, had a little... Can everybody hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. All right. All right, I think everything's good now. But uh, yeah, let's pray for Carol and Dana real quick. Okay. Um, Let me see. Carol. Sorry, Lisa showed me. um, All right, the chat's starting to erase a lot of the older chats. So I actually can't, or not erase them, but... For some reason, it won't let me go back to a certain point. So um, I can't see Carol five years. Oh, yeah, it'll be five years. Okay. So let's pray for Carol and Dana real quick all uh, together. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for these times when we get to spend time together, even though it's on the Internet, it's on YouTube, it's, it's a live stream. Um, You can still bless this time as fellowship together. We can still love on each other, uplift each other, and grow together in your word. That's the beautiful thing about technology. When when it's used to glorify you and to fellowship as the body of Christ. I just pray, Lord, I just lift up Carol to you, Lord. Uh, It'll be five years since she lost her daughter in a motorcycle accident. I cannot imagine this pain. Um, I am sure that there is no amount of time that uh, makes it um, easier to handle. Um, but knowing your truth is uh, can help us. And uh, being biblically sufficient and knowing your word and when your word tells us that you will comfort us to come to me Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come to me all who are weary and heavy burden and I will give you rest. So we can come to you for rest, come to you and, and know that you are uh, almighty, you are loving, you can sympathize because you were tempted in the same ways we are tempted, Lord. You know these things, but you are sinless. You are the sinless one who took our sins to the cross and were regarded as sin for us. And then you rose three days later, defeating sin. And John talks about how we can have eternal joy today. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven, that we can experience true joy today by being in your word and knowing you I pray that you would give that joy to Carol, that she would find that joy and be able to live in that joy, Lord. Also, I pray for Dana, um, her son. 
Um, uh, I, we don't know what's going on, but you know what's going on, Lord. That's what matters. You know the truth of what's going on better than anybody, better than Dana or her son even. You know what's going on. Your will is being done. And I just pray that your will is done and that uh, you would just have your hedge of protection, that you would protect Dana and her son and, and their entire family spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, in every way, God. I pray your hand of protection over them and pray that whatever's going on, that your will first and foremost would be done and that you would receive all the glory and all the honor. Um, and God, I just pray for uh, Sadie and uh, her family's salvation. Uh, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but it can be tough to be a believer in a family that doesn't know you. That's tough. That's that's really difficult, but you can strengthen us, Lord. You can help us to be a witness for you, to win over those who are witnessing our lives and wondering what's different. What is that? They can see the Spirit. They can sense that something is different. They can sense in our lives that you are working in us. I pray that you would give that to Sadie, that her family would uh, just see your Spirit working in her and your truth working in her, and that they would be swayed by it, that they would be pulled towards you, and that it would be your will to call them to a relationship with you, Father. For you call us to you. So I just pray for their salvation, Lord. And uh, everybody else on this chat, I'm sure we all have prayer requests. You know each and every one of us deeply and personally better than we know ourselves for you knew us before we were in even in the womb god i just pray that you would bless each one of us that your hedge of protection would be on each one of us that we would go on from this uplifted and just ready to live our lives for you and 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 with a desire to be in your word father I pray that if you would give each and every one of us something right now, it would be the desire to be in your word. We need that. We need you. And we need to know what your word says in order to live correctly. Give us wisdom, discernment, knowledge, understanding, I pray that you would give us knowledge, not in a puffed up way, that we wouldn't puff up ourselves, but it would be knowledge that we can glorify you with. Help us to understand your word when we read it, and help us to remember your word when we read it, and that you would give us those words in times when we are defending the faith, or speaking with a non-believer, or sharing the gospel, whatever it is. Help us to not be brought down by fear or anxiety, but instead that you would give us courage and strength and the ability to recall Scripture in times when we need to, Lord, for your will to be done and for you to be glorified. So bless each one of us, and I pray that we would honor you as we go forth out of this video and just pray your will is done. In your name, Jesus, amen. So... Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Um, it, we're just getting back into lives now. Um, and uh, Yori, uh, thank you for praying for our Patreon account and for praying that the Lord would bless it. That is, that's a blessing. See, right there, just praying for us that we would be blessed in that. Um, is a huge blessing. So thank you for that, Yori. Can't can't say enough what that means. Um, so thanks everybody for hanging out with us. This is this has been fun. We're just getting back into doing live since we got back from vacation. This is our second one. I feel like we're just getting back into it for the first time. It's like I don't know. Um, 
Leah just hopped on here. I'm going to have to go back and watch the whole video, though. Yeah, you are. And I dedicated the video to you, Leah. Um, so, you know, I'm just saying. But I am going to be doing another video, dedicated video, on this subject. So, um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Again, if you haven't... Go check out our Patreon page. It is in the link in the description. Click that link. It'll take you to our Patreon page, and you can see all the awesome stuff we have going on on Patreon. We just put it up today, so it's brand new. And um, you can go over there and bless us, and, and hopefully in return we can turn around and bless you through having a personal relationship with you, and we can help build each other up through Patreon. There's so many cool things we have on there and we can't wait for you guys to check them out and uh, be a part of that community with us. Um, Smiteth the like button, Tom Hoppins says. Got some Spencer Smith vibes going on there. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Aaron, great live tonight. Thank you very much, Aaron. That is a blessing to hear that. Um, Dana says, I really need friends. Thank you. Oh, well, Dana, we are your friends. Are we not? I mean, I know it's different, but hey, um, let's, let's all, I don't know. It would be, it would be cool for all of us to be able to not just see us, but for us to see you, for you to see each other. And we can do that by having cool, you know, Zoom hangouts and um, online hangouts and even being pen pals. We can, you know, send letters back and forth and, and be each other's friend, right? Um, so we're excited for that to happen uh, with everybody. So go check out our Patreon in the link below, as I've already said a thousand times. Um, our, uh, if you check out down in the link, it says Patreon page. You click that link, you can go check it out and... Check out all the cool get goodies on our Patreon. And check out our video that we did going through all of our goodies on Patreon. You might want to watch that and get a little taste of that as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to call it a night. Everybody's chatting in the lives in the in the chat box. I hate to I hate to break it up. But if you head over to Patreon, we can all chat together on there as well. So um, let's do this. Okay? Sound good? Awesome. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you probably in a video tomorrow and on Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. Tom says, Brylan, you should get some screen graphics. You know what, Tom? Let's talk about that. I think I think I think you and I need to have a conversation about upping some game on here. And I think you can help us with that if you wouldn't mind. Um, would that be cool, Tom, if we chatted about kind of upping some uh, production on here? Um, let me see Tom's reply. Because I think you could really help us out there, Tom. Nice. All right, Tom. We'll talk then. Um, all right. Everybody have a good night. Thank you, Jamie. And... Um, Talk to you all soon, okay?